Hey guys, welcome to Big Church Online. We are so excited that you've joined us today. If you're looking for any sermons or words of encouragement, you've come to the right place. While you're here, please subscribe, like, comment, share. That way you can stay up to date and help others find it as well. Now, let's get this week's sermon in progress. Uh, we're continuing with our Grow series, and how many enjoyed, enjoyed last week? Last week? Last... Well, I am not cooking hibachi up here, y'all, even though some of y'all is like, I'm hungry, but uh, I kind of wanted to bring out some illustrations and some things to kind of show you a few things today. But last week, we talked about what kind of ground we were, and we talked about the wayside ground, the, the hard and the beaten down uh, places that we go to. Sometimes that, we, that happens in our lives and circumstances and situations happen, and we talked about the hurt and the pain and the bitterness and things that have caused our hearts to become hard and our ground to be hard, and also the rocky, rocky ones, which means we're not rooted. We're not planted long enough Come on, in the ground to get our roots established. And, and we talked about how we have to do, we're going to talk about tilling the ground today. But we also talked about the thorny ground. How many, how many, how many are too busy? Come on, you heard me tell that. Well, oh, I'm busy. I'm just so busy. But, you know, too busy uh, to do the things God wants us to do. And sometimes we're choked out by those things. We're choked out by too busy. We're choked out by people. We're choked out by circumstances or things have us too that choke us out. Today, last week, we also talked about there's good ground, and that's the one that produces a harvest. That's the one that produces some of the fruit in our lives that we need, as Jay did a very good job at Circle Up, talking about the fruit uh, that we need to develop. But today, we're going to continue talking about growing, and over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about what kind of soil we are and, and what kind of soil we need to produce a harvest, and are we spreading the seed of the gospel the right way, or any, are we spreading it at all? And are there gr things growing in our lives that should be growing? Are there things growing in our life that should be cut off or killed? In order to grow, I'm going to tell you, we need good ground. The soil needs to be tilled, and it needs to be tested. How many are glad that winter's over? Okay. How many like winter? I will pray for you right now, Jesus, right now. Uh, I don't like winter. I don't like to be cold. I would rather sweat than freeze any day of the week. Um, but, you know, in winter to me, it's kind of cold and dark and a little bit depressing. And, and, you know, you're all cooped up inside. Sometimes it, it gets daylight. I mean, daylight goes down about 530. And it's just, I don't know, I don't like winter at all. That's why Florida is full of older people, seasoned people. <laughs> But you know what bears do? They hibernate in the winter. And, and you know, a lot of times we talk about being dormant in activity, but dormancy sometimes is not a fully bad thing in growing. It's just a time when we're not, we're not doing the things we need to do at that point. But spring is here, summer is here, uh, light, warm, a new season. And during that time, things start coming back to life. I mean, you start seeing the trees budding everywhere and the leaves are green, the flowers are blooming. And that's when planting starts taking place in the spring. I remember growing up in Chicago. I lived there till I was in fifth grade. And growing up in that atmosphere, there was a house here, a little gangway here, a house here. They were right there. We had concrete. There was nothing. I mean, you had a little stripper. I could mow my whole grass with a push mower in probably about 15 minutes. That's how much grass we had. So we grew, we came down in the sixth grade to Kentucky, and, and um, I had no green thumb. I had no idea how to grow anything, how to do a garden. And uh, I remember Dad, we had a little, about an acre next to the house over there, and he called up the guy down the road, and he came and brought his tractor, and he brought his uh, um, disc behind with it. He disced up that whole place right there, and I was amazed to watch that thing just go. Man, I hadn't been around tractors. It was cool. Right now you're looking at me like, what's cool about a tractor? It was cool. <laughs> but we tilled up that ground, and we learned about canning. Not something that comes out of a can. Come on, I always thought vegetables were something you went to the grocery, you just got it, it was a can of green beans. But we learned about canning. We learned about putting them uh, into the jars and, and putting the lids on them. You had to put them on just right or they wouldn't seal right. And uh, learned about preserving, and we knew that those green beans would last for you know two, three, four years. And if they're in our shelf for more than five years, you need to get rid of them. But... We learned, I learned how to, ha to like green beans. It's weird right now that I really don't like green beans, but back then we had a whole 
half a garden of green beans. So I had to learn how to like green beans. I had to learn how to like cabbage. And I like corn on the cob, especially if it's new, new corn like this. You know, I don't like that stuff. Ugh. Anyway, I like sweet corn. But every garden has a variety in it. It has a selection in it. Just look around. This is a garden that God has planted right here in Big Church. And we're all of, uh, of different races and, 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 and ethnicities and ages. And I, I really believe that God is doing something good in this place right now. He's performing the growth that we need. We're learning how to grow together. We're learning our differences. And we're learning how to be a family. But look around you. Everyone here today is different. God's garden has a variety of fruits and vegetables. My title of my message today is... How does your garden grow? I'm going to try to do this with a, with a mic in my hand. I had the cordless one. But no, don't get, don't, don't get afraid. Don't be very afraid. Just while I cut it. I'm going to ask you this morning, what vegetable do you relate to in your Christian walk? We see this pepper... We see this pepper, if I don't gouge my eye out with a knife. But it's, it's really shiny, and it's really pretty on the outside. And, you know, there's not any imperfections in it. And it just looks really, really nice. I, I was going to shine it up even more. That's about the best I could get it. But it looks really good on the outside. It's smooth and firm. And, but what happens when you, this is a very sharp knife, praise the Lord. When you open up this pepper, it has a few seeds in it. You cut it open, there's not much inside of it. Matthew 23, 25 says this. He was talking to the Pharisees. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, then the outside of them will be clean also. These guys knew all the scriptures. They knew, uh, they dressed the part. They, they could recite the Bible to you back and forward. They, they fasted and they tithed. And they also let everybody know that they fasted and tithed. They walked around showing everybody. They preached really good on Facebook. I know they had Facebook back then, y'all. But uh, they were really good on social media about showing. But there was nothing on the inside of them that were producing any kind of fruit. Many, many, many look good on the outside but we're empty on the inside. I've been guilty of that, looking good on the outside, but I need things inside of my life to fill me up for the things that I lack in sometimes. But religion versus relationship. Religion demands, relationship asks. Religion restricts and relationship frees you. Religion says you're guilty and relationship says you are forgiven. Come on, we need to start living in that way. God is more concerned about the inside of you than he is on the outside of you. Look at what he said in Samuel 16, 7 here. He said, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at the appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Can I tell you growing up, my mom was not a great cook. And I hated green peppers, and I still don't like green peppers much. I like these red ones. They're good. Mmm, yummy. But she used to make stuffed green peppers. Oh, one thing my mama could cook was a stuffed green pepper. But what little did she know that I would dig the inside out. Oh, no, never ate the pepper. That pepper got hidden in the bottom of the trash can. It got hidden somewhere. I didn't eat that thing. But what it is, it was still full of something that was good. And I'm letting you know this morning that the Holy Spirit can fill you up inside and he can put something, he can put something good inside of something maybe you really don't like. Maybe you're not liking yourself. Maybe you feel like you're not good enough for the Holy Spirit to do something in your life. I got news for you. He wants to fill you up with all of the good things. He wants to make you yummy to the taste. Even though the core may be a little bit rotten. Don't say nothing. She's, she, she, knows my core, she knows that my core is rotten sometimes. 
Holy Spirit's goal is not behavior modification. He doesn't want us just to grow for a little while and he doesn't want us to be uh, uh, doing this for just a period of time. He wants us to be rooted and not be uprooted so easily. He wants total transformation. The Bible says ultimately what he wants to do is he wants us to be made in his image. And, and, you know, and that's a process. If, we've talk, if you've been around here long enough, that's a process. We have to stay in the process to be made in his image. Number two, there's no points, but anyway. Green beans. Anybody y'all like green beans? <laughs> Pastor Mindy will, will go to a restaurant just for the green beans sometimes. And she makes really good green beans too. I, I, I don't really care about them, but I like hers anyway. But there's a difference in green beans. I don't know if y'all know. And some of y'all young people are looking at me like, what is he talking about, a garden, all this? There's, a, there's, there's ones called bush beans, half runners. They're all over the place. They go to and fro. They're, they're, they, you lift up the leaves of the beans, and sometimes you find a lot of them. But what happens is, underneath, there are several beans that have sat on the ground and have rotted. We can't just lay around... We have to allow the Holy Spirit to lift us up. We have to allow him to put the sunshine underneath us because if you do not do that, you're going to rot on the inside. I can remember going through all of, I can remember going through those things and picking up those beans and, 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 and I mean, half of them would be rotten, but the other half was good. But we can't just lay around and wait for God to do something. We have to do something ourselves. There's another kind of green beans called a pole bean. Pole bean, you can tell I'm from the country. The pole bean wants to climb up everything. Y'all remember tobacco sticks? Anybody know what a tobacco stick is? I got a few country folk in here. We used to take the tobacco sticks up there. But also, when you planted the corn, you would put the beans around the corn and it would grow up into the corn stalks. They wanted to be elevated, so they attached themselves to whatever was around them. They were planted in the corn, so they attached themselves. And they slowly worked their way up whatever you set out there for. What kind of bean... That kind of bean usually didn't rot because it was elevated to a new place. But we can't let ourselves get too high. Come on, we can't let ourselves get too high thinking we have all of the answers or we know everything. We have to allow the process of growing and try not to do it all ourselves, which that's what Pastor Mindy said. We we, we try to climb over people. Come on. We We try to go ahead of ourselves. We attach ourselves to the wrong things. Can I just let that you know something today? God will take you higher than you can ever get on your own. James 4.10 says this. Humble yourself. There's a big one. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. We're trying to get ahead and get, a, get by. We're trying to do the things ourselves. And we wonder why we're not getting to that place. We wonder why we're not producing or growing in that place. It's because we have not allowed ourselves to be humbled, to be say, okay, God, you're going to do what you're going to do. I've been trying to figure this out for a long time, and I haven't got it figured out yet, but I am going to do what you want me to do. Anybody know what this is? That's a seed potato. It's mushy and yucky. But do you know what this is called growing out of it? Eyes. Damn, I got me some country people in here. This is great. This, y'all know what this is too, don't you? That's an ear of corn. And I'm going to start talking a little bit about eyes and ears. I wish I had a Mr. Potato Head or Mrs. Potato Head up here so I could show you the real way that works. But these people see and hear everything that's going on. Oh, I'm about to jump on somebody here. They're always finding fault. They're busybodies. They're in your, in your business and they say, well, if you want my opinion, most of the time you don't want their opinion. They'd say, if you ask me, say, well, I'm not going to ask you. I'll probably never ask you for anything. But they're always trying to find fault. But Matthew 7, 1 says this, judge not that you be not judged. You need to listen to that one. Whatever you're judging people about, you will probably be judged for that same thing or something similar to it going down the line. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. There's a lot. And with what measure you use, it will be measured 
back to you. So that means that you could grow good things and good things will come back to you. Or you can grow bad things and bad things will come back to you. Anybody know what okra is? I, don't, I didn't have one. All they had was frozen okra in a bag, and I just didn't figure that would be a very good uh, thing to show. But okra is this prickly, slimy, yes, yes, yes. It's prickly and slimy, and it has to be handled with care. And most of the time, if you're going to mess with okra, you've got to put some gloves on or you're going to be irritated. That reminds me of a lot of people right now that they get their feelings hurt. <laughs> Not on y'all or anything, but, but anyway. They're touchy, and in my best, Jack Nicholson, they can't handle the truth. <laughs> they are like the grand, y'all know what a granddaddy long leg is? Yeah. I remember working out in the garden, and then things would be all over the place. There was legs flying all over the place. I mean, they would get on you. That's the way a lot of people are right now. They got their feelings all going 6,000 feet. They wear it, wear it on their shoulder, wear it on their our, our arms all the time. And, and what if Jesus got his feelings hurt? Come on. They beat him. They cursed him. They spit on him. And he went all the way to the cross for us. I think sometimes we have to pull up our big boy pants sometimes. And we have to go forward and not get our feelings hurt so much. We need, but you know what about okra? If you cook it right, man, fried okra is good. Anybody like fried okra? Oh, yeah, praise the Lord, fried okra is good. But it better be crispy, it better not be slimy, no. But listen, what we need to be more like is the sweet potato, Christian. I'll be honest, when I go get a potato at the, sto at the uh, restaurant, she will tell you, I drowned it. With butter, sour cream. Can you get bacon on it? Can I get an amen on some bacon? Let's put a little cheese on it. I'm going to say throw whatever you can throw out of the kitchen, throw it on that potato because I'm about to eat it. But sweet potatoes, for the most part, are naturally sweet. You don't have to put sour cream on them. Most of the time, if you put sour cream on it's going to be disgusting. You can't put butter on them, but you don't really have to do that because they're naturally sweet. You can bake them. You can fry them. You can do whatever you want to, but they're still sweet. We need to be like that all the time. Am I sweet all the time? Heck no. I've been a little grouchy for the last couple weeks. I've not been sweet. But we need to be sweet most of the time. I tell people all the time, if you get up each day, you need to put your sweetener on. You need to put a smile on your face. You need to be, because you know what? You have something that the world does not have. You have the love of Jesus inside of you. You have him living with you eternally. You ought to be happy. We need to be the same all the time. Consistency is the key to breakthrough. That's a hard one for me sometimes. Consistency is the key to breakthrough. Why? Why do we need to be consistent? Because these are watching. Y'all know what those are? Hey, good answer. Carrot Christians. They're, they're, they're just starting out. They're not figuring it out. They haven't been all. They're not like y'all who have everything figured out already. They're just starting out trying to figure it out. I'll put this over here. Well, what you can mostly see when you get a carrot in the garden is what's growing up top. But you got to understand there's something growing underneath. Even though you can't see it, it's producing a vegetable underneath that's going to be very, very yummy if you like carrots. These things take time to develop. They take time to make. If you pull this stalk out too soon, you're not going to have a carrot attached to it. You have to allow it to grow and stay in the soil. These are coming if we tend our garden correctly. There's going to be, mm, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Watermelon. I was going to chop it, but Bobby said I should be like Gallagher and got a mallet and just smashed it. That would have been cool. Hold on. Ooh, that's a sharp one. We having, we're having hibachi later. But you can see there's the watermelon. It is a good looking watermelon. But the outside of that water, watermelon, 
That would be horrible. News at five, Pastor. No, no. Here we go. The outside of that watermelon is not edible. You ever took a big bite of the, in, right up close to where the thing is? It's disgusting. But the inside of that thing is sweet. We as a church, are we willing to work through the layers to find the gold? Are we willing to work through the core, which is not edible? As I said last week, if you eat a banana peel, it's disgusting. Disgusting, as Papa, uh, Bubba would say. Are we willing to work through the layers to get to the gold? Are we willing to, willing to work through the tattoos, the earrings, the, the, the dress, the hats? And I'll just, I'm just going to tell you, we were somewhere... And there was some people came in and we were at a different, we were at a church and one of the ushers came up and said, told one of our young men, they were visitors, visitors, and said, hey, uh, young man, you can't wear that hat in our church. Man, it rubbed me and Pastor Mindy the wrong way. So after that, I talked to the pastor. I said, how? And these were guests, you know. I said, so we're not gonna love someone walking in here that's dressed a certain way or wearing a hat. And listen, if y'all got an issue with hats, that's, my dad does not like hats in church, but that's, that's between him and Jesus. But I believe that God calls you just the way that you are. He wants them to come through the door just the way that they are, no matter if you don't have the best dress, if you don't have the things. And I said, what about that man that's sitting in the back back there that has his veteran hat on every Sunday? Does anybody ever tell him to take his hat off? No, I think not. Woo, you don't have to take your hat off, you're good. <laughs> this is not a convicting. But I mean, we've got to be able to be willing to work through all of the things. Listen, I told you a long time ago, years ago, if you had a tattoo, you were going straight to hell, don't collect $200, don't pass go. If you had an earring in your ear, my dad would never have, I've never had one. But I was always passing judgment on people until God said, Listen, look at you. Here you are judging someone else, but yet you got your own problems. You might not have a tattoo or an earring. You might not have the things that you keep, you keep pulling up there, but you still got your issues. All of our vegetables are valuable, even though they taste different. Some vegetables I do not like. Broccoli, ugh. But they're all valuable. They taste different. They look different. And some of them take longer to produce we're always trying to pull something out, like I said, too quickly. We need to let, let some of this, some of y'all have been coming for a little while, let some of this sink into you and allow God to develop you when no one else is looking. This carrot comes along when nobody's looking. We're looking at the green stalk up here. The rabbit's eating that part of it, but he wished he could get this part of it. So many times we pull things out too soon. So if you're planting a garden, Anybody ever planted a garden? I'm talking about garden, not, not flowers. That's not a garden. <laughs> Some of y'all would differ on that, but I'm talking about a real garden. Then you'll understand what I'm saying. Some of these young people, they look at me like, I don't even know what you're talking about. We're going to get some green beans at Kroger. <laughs> but planting a garden, what do you do? Well, first of all, the soil needs to be tilled and it needs to be tested. Why? Because, the se because it's hard and it's beaten down by the natural things that happen in it. You have to till the ground and remove the rocks. I am not kidding you. I kid you not. They tilled that garden every year. We got piles of rocks out of that garden every year. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. We had piles and piles of rocks and the next year they would till it up. There would be pile, another pile like, are these rocks producing other rocks? I mean, it was amazing to see that. But the rocks, you have to pull the rocks out. And you have to, I remember getting out in the morning, you have to till the ground, you have to remove the rocks. And we sweated. My grandma, man, she would make us get up 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning. She'd say, honey, we need to get in that garden. I'd say, mama, it's 6.30 in the morning. One day she let me sleep. No, she let me sleep. She was out there. She, she'd do it. But then I had to go out at 11 o'clock when it was 100 degrees outside. I was very thankful to get up and have to work in that garden that morning to do it from then on. 
But we have to till the ground because our forefathers did the work. They tilled to make it easier for us. They make it easier for the roots to be taken hold of. Hard work produces a great harvest. And listen, you got to plant your seed correctly. I remember the first time we tried to make our rows. Jessica knows what I'm talking about. And we didn't, we got smarter the next time. And we used a tobacco stick and a string. First time we eyeballed it. It was bad. I mean, the rows were going all of a sudden and then they go. And they got down to the back one. On the other side of it, you could only get three plants on, on this side of it, and you got 40 on the other side. But we had to learn how to spread this seed correctly. And when you put the seed in the ground, it can't be too deep or it can't be too shallow. You have to keep your row straight, you have to keep things in order. And you can't sow your seed incorrectly. The Bible says we're to sow our seeds, we're to cast our seeds. That means we're talking about the gospel and Jesus. But there are some things that we can do. Sometimes we sow our seed too much. I know what Pastor you I say. You should be able to tell someone what Jesus has done in your life in two minutes or three minutes or less. So many times we try to preach to people that don't want to really hear it. Oh, I know this is a pastor talking to you, but that really don't want to hear it. I still say we should spread our seed, but we ought to be able to be able to tell them how good God's been in two to three minutes, not 27 and a half minutes. You have to cultivate what's been planted. <sighs> Edit this if you want. I remember when I told the refuge kids this, but I used to use a hoe in the garden. They looked at me like, what's a hoe? I literally had one on the stage and showed them what it was because they didn't know what it was. But we used to pull all the weeds by hand and used to hoe that garden with a hoe. Every you chop at those weeds, you would go. How many can get a dandelion out of your yard? Have you ever seen the root on a dandelion? Come on, you can pull it out and I swear you can pull it out and spray it and three days later that sucker's back. He's like a roach. You can't kill them. But what you, what you have to do is you have to dig down deep to get those roots out. I remember when I first felt love from my father. He bought a rototiller. <laughs> After that, my life was amazing because, man, I mean, even though it would beat us, I didn't have to do it with a hoe. We, you could really till that ground up in half the time. But the soil must be tilled, and it's a process to break up the dirt. It softens and allows the seed to have access to the soil. It cannot remain on the surface because the sun will get it or birds will get it. Or as I said last week, the enemy is looking. There are seeds planted right now in some of you and in some of your family members that the enemy is trying to snatch or steal away right now because he's a thief, and he, that's, what he, that's what he does. But just like being saved, you need a good root system that cannot be uprooted easily when life happens. Come on, life is going to happen. Things are going to happen in life that you need to be deep-rooted in. You have to keep developing and keep the ground soft. And next, we've got to keep working. This is my last point. I don't have a point, but this is my last one. We've got to keep working till the harvest. If we keep working, it takes us back to where we intended to be. Look at Revelations 2, 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to him the eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise and God. I believe that if we tended and cultivated, God's taking us back to where we naturally were supposed to be. You remember he made a garden and he tended it. He said, it's good. And he gave everyone, everything that they wanted in that garden they could have, but they made a choice and it was a bad choice. But I think today that we have tended and cultivated soil many years ago. We planted seeds, prob probably didn't plant all of them correctly, but we planted seeds and we scattered them. And I believe that there's a harvest coming. 
I believe that what, uh, somebody said this to me last week, I've spent, the only, I did some things with my youth group and I just don't see the, the fruit of it. No, you planted the seed, you just have to know that the harvest is coming. Once you plant that seed in the ground, you can't sit and watch everything happen on it, but you gotta know and believe and have faith in God that whatever you planted, if you planted something in your kids when they're young and they're acting crazy right now, you gotta believe that what you planted in them is gonna come to fruition and bear fruit. So I ask you, as you're standing with me, how does your garden grow? Do you relate to any of these vegetables up here? Where are you? Where are we in the growth process? Where are we in the garden process right now? God intended us to grow. He intended us to flourish. He intended us to produce fruit. He he intended us to not live in hibernation or in dormancy. He intended us to be life givers. Maybe you're saying this, you know, I've not started growing yet. Maybe I'm in the process of trying to figure all this out. Well, I've got news for you. You probably ain't going to figure it all out all at once. But start the growth process. Just step into wherever, you, wherever area you are in your life and just say, God, I don't know where I'm going or what you're going, but I'm believing that this is good ground. I'm believing that I'm going to grow in this ground. Help me to get deep-rooted when life happens because it's going to happen. You start that process by accepting Jesus as your Savior. That's the first step to it. And as we say almost every week, the Bible says today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. You never know how fragile life is. You never know when it could be over. I lost my son-in-law last last Sunday in a car accident, just coming back from a fishing tournament. I know he didn't intend to crash that car that night, but it happened. That's how fast life can can be gone. That's why it says, if we would confess with our mouth and we just say, Jesus, I've sinned against you. I've made some mistakes. Will you please forgive me of my sins? The word says, if you believe in your heart, It's different to just say a word. You have to believe it in faith and say, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for me. I believe that you can change my life and forgive me of my sins. And I believe that you can help me walk this thing out. You can help me as I grow in you, Jesus, but I need you. This process is where all growth starts. And if you're here today and you have not quite understood or, 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 or you, like I said, you've got things, you, there's problems, that, there's things you don't understand. Sorry. If you would text this number, text SAVED to 502-237-1234. And what that'll do, that'll give you the next steps. That'll help you go through this process because we're here for you. We want you to go and grow. But maybe your growth, maybe you've been in this thing, your growth, you've been growing and then there's been some struggles and you feel like you've got uprooted or you feel like that you've gone backwards and you've allowed shame and guilt. And today I wanna tell you that the growth process, God allows regrowth. He gives you a second chance to be planted, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. Thank you, Jesus. So wherever you are today, the prayer team is gonna be on the left and the right. If you're in that first process and you don't know who Jesus is, come up and agree with someone. Come to this altar. If you're at a place where you think, man, I'm just, I don't know where I'm at, come up and ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to direct me and guide me and lead me. These altars are open. Thank you for joining us today. If you're looking for more information or resources, you can visit mybigchurch.com or follow us on social media at mybigchurch. We love you guys. See you soon.